the best game of my career hello everyone and welcome back to another very interesting and educational game my name is Nitzan Steinberg Grandmaster and today you will learn such an important things in chess you know you have no idea what is going to come so sit back relax and enjoy the show so you know, before I will start, I really want to show you something very special to my heart. You know, my YouTube channel has, for now, 722 subscribers. So thank you very much for watching. You can see 67 videos. You have so much things to see here. You, uh, one game against Hans Niemann and also so much, you know, a very important game against Ikar Nakamura that I don't know if it was a draw or a win or maybe I lost the game but you can see it's everything here you have your playlist and you can see it of course also live streaming that I'm playing you know in the title Tuesday or in leeches so just you know f please feel free to to bring yourself to these videos and to enjoy 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 and don't forget to like this video if you like it and you know it comes to your mind and also you learn something so give me a feedback comment below what do you think and uh, subscribe my channel don't forget so let's start this game i was playing against grandmaster from germany gennady ginzburg um 11 years ago is it's unbelievable for me you know 11 years already passed uh, from this game uh, it was uh, in the tournament of the Maccabia Grandmaster and uh, yeah uh, let's see the game so e4 c5 knight f3 e6 as you know this is the uh, Sicilian opening of course um, you know in this position of course d6 is the option d4 takes takes knight f6 knight c3 here are some uh, uh, options knight c6 is the rouser variation a6 is the uh, knight of of course g6 is the uh, dra dragon uh, so you can you know you can be uh, quite sure that i will upload a lot of things about knight of about rouser about a uh, dragon uh, so it will be very interesting but in this game he played the move e6 and this is the taiman over the paulsen variation i played the move d4 c takes knight takes a6 he played in this position and you know uh, in this particular position there is so many uh, moves to play for example bishop to d3 uh, just to develop a bishop c4 uh, is very known that uh, uh, just you, you bring another piece another pawn into the center right after it you will bring knight c3 bishop e3 bishop e2 castle right so it's very very interesting and complicated c4 i think uh, for now is the is the best move in this position um, also of course knight c3 uh, there is an option bishop e2 um, as i played in the game uh, and that's it i think uh, probably bishop d3 I, I don't remember if i already showed it but yeah it's also a move so i played the move bishop to e2 and he played the move knight to f6 of course this pawn is under attack don't forget that e5 is very bad move you can stop the video and think by yourself why is a bad move and now i will show you so e5 just queen a5 check of course knight c3 for example and just queen takes e5 and black um, took the pawn uh, for free so thank you very much it was very tasty so uh, of course now we are playing the move knight c3 we are developing our knight and also protecting the pawn on e4 so we play the move e5 and you know this was very very uh for me surprise right because the the first move that comes to my mind is queen c7 for example this is the theory bishop b4 also knight c6 is also an option but e5 you you played e6 you know like two two or three moves uh, uh, before this so e5 what is the point and now i will tell you what the point that because after knight f5 for example black is will play the move d5 very strong move attacking this pawn on e4 and of course don't forget that e takes d5 is not an option because bishop takes f5 and black has a piece up 
So in this position, after d5, black, you know, is a very, very in a good position. A d4 also a, a very strong move. The e4 pawn is under attack. So yeah, it's it's bad position already for white. And, and also knight b3, not so good because of bishop b4. And now also knight uh, is threatening on e4. And after f3, for example, d5, black will play. And after e takes, knight takes, and of course in this position, uh, a white is, is just, you know, black is not is not a, a bad, of course. I think it's an equal position after bishop d2, for example, uh, and that's it. For of, of course, queen takes d5 is just a blunder, because there is a pin, right? So, yeah. So, but in this position, I played the best move, I think, in the position. I played the move knight to f3, because I really wanted to, to, to take the, uh, the tempo, right? Uh, because now we are threatening the pawn on e5. He don't have time to play bishop b4, so he played the move d6. So we got like knight of bishop e2 with one tempo up, right? Because if you can see in this position, let's do it quickly. After d4 takes, takes knight f6, knight c3, a6, bishop e2, e5, knight f3. Now this is black's turn. But in our game, right, in my game, after e5, knight f3, d6, now it's my turn. So I have one tempo up. I play the move castle, bishop e7, and now I play the move a4. This, this very important move in, in the Sicilian, uh, this, my plan was just to avoid, to prevent b5 and bishop b7. Black wants to play b, b5, bishop b7, knight bd7, rook c8, uh, also to press on the c file with queen c7 maybe, uh, knight b6, knight c4. So a4, you know, is just preventing from b5 and also maybe in some variations to play the move a5 with controlling this uh, b6 uh, square, maybe bishop maybe knight will come um, so so yeah it's 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 very common move he played the move castle and now i play the move a3 and you know also very uh, a very um, uh, you know simple move right because we are bringing the window for for our king also in the next future and also don't forget that my point was that to play maybe bishop to e3 um, and and not uh, to bring the option for black to play knight g4. So h3, you know, like it's a prophylactic move uh, and also a window for our king. So we played the move b6 and now the game started to be very, very interesting. Now I thought like you can stop also the video now and think by yourself, what is the plan for white, okay? What are the moves that you want to play? How do you want to develop your pieces? And after it, I will show you what I uh, understand in this position. So, after five seconds that you thought, five minutes, you know, like, uh, uh, you thought about this position, I can tell you that after c5, the first move in the, in the chess game, he played the move c5. And after c5, he, he, he exchanged the, the pawn c5 uh, with the pawn of d4. So, he don't have the option to play c5 or c6, right? And in this particular position, he also played the move e5 already. So which square do you see that is the most important in this position, in this Sicilian system? And I will tell you, this d5 pawn, uh, squares, sorry, of course. We want to bring our pieces to d5 square, but which piece do you think? So I will tell you my op opinion, the knight on, from f3, to d5. If I will bring this knight to d5, I will be just the king, right? But how can I do it? So I thought about knight to d2. I want to bring him through c4, e3, and d5. So my opponent played the move bishop b7. And now, oh, you're telling me, Nitsan, what you are doing? Because knight c4 now is just blundering a pawn. Oh, maybe not. Let's think about it. So knight c4, knight e4 he can do. Of course, after bishop takes e4, it's a blunder because knight takes, knight takes, and queen d5 with double attack, right? So we are winning a piece. But after knight takes c4, my point was to take this knight, bishop takes, and now bishop to e3. So I sacrificing a pawn, but the b6 pawn is weak, and also the d6 pawn is weak. So how black can defend the pawn on b6? If he's playing the move b5, I will play knight b6, rook a7, and a takes b5. And of course, in this position, white is just winning because this pawn is, is very bad. The rook is coming into the game. We have two bishops, strong, very uh, uh, bishop um, 
and, and, and they are just doing incredible job. So B5 is not working. And after knight D7, also one move that we need to consider because the B6 uh, pawn now is, uh, um, uh, is defended. We will take the pawn on D6. Bishop takes, queen takes, bishop C2, and now rook Fc1, bishop F5, and rook C7. And now I agree that we are lost the pawn, but these pawns are, are very bad for black. And also our bishops are just perfect. Uh, just perfect uh, position and also rook a d1 a uh, rook d1 of course rook c1 so it just you, you know it's just amazing our pieces are very very active and yeah it's just a uh, advantage for white so in this position also bishop c2 was an option but queen takes c2 bishop d6 and now just rook fd1 uh, and after queen e7 just queen d2 and yeah just black lost a bishop or a knight so we are winning a piece and we're winning the game so all of this was were my considerable you know like my thought during the game if he will take the, the pawn on e4 but he didn't he played with queen to c7 so now we must understand what is the next move because our plan was to play knight e3 but don't forget the pawn on e4 is under attack so we must think if we can do it another time, if we can uh, resume with our plan. So knight d3, for example, of course, bishop e4 doesn't work because takes, takes, knight d5, queen d8, takes, takes, and queen d5 with double attack, right? And we are winning the game. And um, so in this position, uh, after knight e4, we have very strong move, knight e to d5. And now we are threatening also the queen, also the bishop, and also the knight. So after bishop d5, we are returning to um, to this variation with, with winning the, the piece. And after knight takes c3, just knight takes c7, knight takes d1, and knight takes a8. Bishop takes, rook takes d1. And now we are, we are up exchange, and of course white is just better. So in this per particular position, he played the move knight bd7. And now we also need to ask yourself if black is threatening to take the pawn on e4 and now the point is yes he's threatening why because now if you remember the rooks are connecting uh, connecting right because in this position when he played bishop takes e4 knight takes knight takes knight d5 queen d8 takes takes queen d5 we have double attack but in the other position where the knight is already here the rook is not in the um is under attack of course right because for example after knight e3 if he's playing knight bd7 and we will play rook e1 just uh, bishop e4 for example knight takes knight takes knight d5 queen d8 takes takes queen d5 and just uh, you know queen and knight df6 right because the rook is not under attack so all of this we must understand and and uh, and, and our plan is now to 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 defend this very important um a piece e4 pawn e4 so in this position you can see something very very special in chess how many pieces are attacking and controlling the d5 square we have your knight we have another knight we have a bishop we have a pawn and we have a queen five pieces you know it's it's amazing i think and this was the game so rookie f8 and now i played the move rook to e1 with the point that i understand that the pawn on e4 is very important for me and i want to develop a, a, a rook and also bringing the opportunity maybe to play knight f5 uh, and also to to defend the pawn on e4 so he played the move rook a c8 so you remember our strategy and our plan to bring the knight to d5 but in this particular position, we can't do it because knight d5, just knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes, also the c2 pawn just, uh, you know, um, uh, black just will take it. But, you know, our, our plan was to bring the knight on d5 and he will be the king. Nothing can touch him, right? So we must uh, prevent from taking it with the knight from f6 and also with the bishop from b7 so how can we just you know kick away this bishop or the knight from f6 and the move is g4 just to play g5 and uh, kick away this knight from f6 
So he played the move knight c5, and now he's threatening the pawn on e4. So I played the move knight to f5, bishop f8, now g5, we are kicking him away, knight fd7, and now I know you, I know you guys, and I'm sure 100% that you will tell yourself, oh, now we are coming back to e3, and we are coming to d5. Our plan is to bring my, the knight to e5 and to be the king. Oh, but you are right, and I'm wrong. I didn't play it, but knight e3 was the best move in this position. I played instead the move bishop to g4. My point was to develop another piece, and also you can see this diagonal, I really wanted to bring a, a, the, this bishop to this diagonal, because I felt like on f3 he already did his job. So after rook cd8, I played the move knight to e3. And now you probably think, why knight xc4 is a bad move? So knight d 5 knight xc3, knight xc7, knight xd1, knight xc8, and in this position, you can see that his king is, uh, his knight of course, uh, is trapped, but our knight is, is not trapped, because knight c7 will come away, because rook takes c8, bishop g4, rook d8 coming back, and this knight will be uh, lost of course, so we will be rook up. So in this position, just white is totally winning, so knight e4 is not a move. So we play the move knight to e6, and now I play the move knight e d5. I'm bringing the knight to d5, and I'm very, very um, exciting of this moment. I'm bringing the knight to his best um, position, best square in the game. So after queen b8, I really want also in this position, you can stop the video and think by yourself, how can we develop a piece? Which piece and why? So I played the move bishop to e3. This is the only minor piece that we didn't develop until now. And we are bringing the bishop to e3, we are improving his uh, position, and uh, yeah, we are doing a great job, I think. Bishop c6, and now h4, time to attack his king, a5, h5, bishop e7 he played, g6 with all the power, knight d5, and now of course g takes f7, because we want to, uh, uh, to open the black's king, because after g takes h7, for example, king h8, and now the king will be, you know, somehow safe, but gf7, king takes f7, and now he's not safe at all, bishop f5, I really want to develop another, uh, you know, to improve the position of the piece, I want maybe to bring the queen to g4, right, so he played the move knight f8, and also don't forget that the pawn on h7 is a weak pawn, so knight f8, now queen f3 I played, king g8, and now also I really recommend you to stop the video now, think by yourself which piece should bring into the game. So I came to my conclusion that all my pieces, very good, job, great, fantastic, wonderful. But what about our rooks? Where do I need our rook? So I played the move king to h1. I realized that I want to bring the rook to g1 and now he will do an amazing job. So bishop d7, rook g1, knight c e6, and now queen g4, we are bringing another piece into the uh, g file, bishop c8, bishop h6, g5, h takes g6, and my opponent just resigned the game, and as you know, in this position you can see some, something, you know, very strange, I think, in my chess career, this never happened, all of his pieces, you know, like so many pieces, six pieces in the last row, one piece, you know, one, the bishop in the seven row and the knight on in, in the e6 square, you know, it's unbelievable. A grandmaster with the black pieces just didn't play at all in this uh, particular game. And you know why? Because our plan to bring the knight to d5, this knight to d5 and this knight in c3, just managing to control all the game. And you know, it's very, very funny to say, but in this game, I really want to say sorry for one piece that didn't work, our rook on a1. So the rook on a1, really, really sorry from the you know the bottom of my heart. Uh, I love you, and in the ne next game maybe you will come back to life and also help uh, during the game. So all of my pieces, all of my pieces did a great job to give this checkmate. You know very soon uh, and re the winning grandmaster. 
from Germany in this game. So, ladies and gentlemen, I really, really hope you had a very good video and you like it. So don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon. Bye-bye.